Hi everyone, Paula Caldwell here at Patchwork Plus. Um, are you ready for Ruler of the Month? This is Club 6 and today we're going to learn how to use and get acquainted with HQ Leafy Template. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can use it for more things than you think. Um, of course, it's called Leafy and you can use it for leaves, but we're going to find out that we can do a whole lot more with this template. So on your back of your package, you have four designs. Um, we can look at those and then how those are stitched out. And then your idea sheet as well has some ideas on it, uh, different uses. And we're going to go beyond that a little bit maybe today. These you can accomplish with other rulers that we've had. Um, and so if we have time, we'll look at those, but we're gonna focus more about on things that maybe are a little unusual um, that we might wanna use. So as usual, I've um, drawn out a few ideas of my own. And so um, as a reminder, I'm doing something kind of new. I'm drawing out using my tracing wheel to get that accurate measurement and then I am um, seeing how, how long that um, motif is. So this is a two and an eighth inches from tip to tip. The rounded one, the curved edge leaf, is going to be two and a quarter. So um, good information as you think and plan ahead on how you're going to use your ruler, or if you're like me, you're looking at your space and thinking, what can I do there? And then you think, oh yeah, I've got that leaf and it's just the right height. So we're gonna play around with some ideas. So here's just turning it upside down, one way and then another. And uh, then you know me, if there's any negative space, I'm gonna wanna put something in there. Um, again, the same thing, only this time, because each end is pointed, you just, stitch it out and then slide. And when we slide, we're keeping our registration line and our quarter inch from uh, the side there. And again, um, I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice just to kind of put something else across there? So I did some parallel lines. This one is a lot of fun. And once you stitch it out, so you can go all the way across and then turn it and then line up your registration lines and then move this way. The fun thing is, uh, if I hadn't marked in it so much, you could see it gives you this nice elongated diamond, uh, which you can then go in and put that uh, back in if you'd like, and then a little motif here. So when we do that back, top and bottom, then we're gonna have a motif that's four and a half inches. Um, and I can see that uh, being a nice border design. Even if you were to doing this much, just one top or bottom, you could still go in and do that uh, little slanted triangle, arced triangle, um, and that would be a nice border design or sashing design. This is using our eight point grid, only this time we're, we're using 16 points actually. And so from the center, we're just simply rotating it so that we're lining up the midline of our template with our grid line and just moving it around. You could do that uh, eight times. You could do it 16 as this one, and you could even go back in and do another one if you wanted to. Um, and when you finish it from side to side, it's going to be, I guess that's the diameter, is going to be four and a half inches. So again, helpful information uh, to know if I had, let's say a six inch block or a five inch block, I'm going to have some extra space over here. So then I could just echo around and that would certainly um, set it off a little bit more and add a little more dimension to it. And you could build it out to fill your block. This was just a crazy idea of horizontal and vertical axis. And then I put the rounded tip to the center rather than the tip. And when we when I did that, I got this nice little star shape. Um, 
which kind of was fun. And you could, instead of doing four, you could do eight or even 16 and see what that looks like. And then this go around, I actually, I didn't draw my midline. So let's say this is my midline. So my horizontal and vertical axis. So I'm actually putting the rounded tip. So here it was actually, the quarter inch was meeting right there. So that's the top, that's the top arc of my leaf. On this one, here's my, my center. And so I'm actually a quarter inch above that. So now here's the top of my arch. And so that's what I'm gonna do each time I turn turn it uh, around. So this time would be, so now a quarter inch. So just play around with that, be fun. If you like doing um, edge to edge, or even you could even use this uh, on a border or uh, a large outer border, um, one idea is to draw your stem if, you, if that gives you help in visualizing it. Another thought is if this is going to be across the page, you might take uh, like the dots that we use, like when we used to do yard sales and put a dot, you know, here, there and yon where you want your flowers to be. Um, and that gives you kind of a, a roadmap. And then you're gonna come in and do your flower. And then you travel, and then you can use your leaf, put some leaves in, and then keep traveling till you get to your next dot. Or you could chalk a dot, um, and then make your next flower. And as you come make your flower, then you find an exit. So it could be anywhere, and it could go over here, and then make a leaf. So a great tool if you like to do edge to edge, uh, in a way that you could meander across uh, the width of your quilt. So lots of ideas again. This is going from the center with the pointed end, um, the pointed leaf, and that is just on an eight point grid. So we're gonna do some of that at the machine. So let's get started and we'll stitch some of these out. Let's go see what it's all about. I've drawn my grid and I don't know if you can see that my eight, this is 16 and I've stitched out, um, I skipped one, so we'll go back and do that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So number eight, I missed. Um, so we'll go back and pick that one up. So I'm starting in the center. And the other important thing is to remember that your template is looking up at you. Of course, if you have your hand to grip on, that'll um, tell you which side is up. But it is important because our registration lines, if we have it flipped over, they get distorted and they're not true. So it's important that you be able to read Handy Quilter, uh, Handy Gadget, I think this is what it is. Okay, so we're using our rounded leaf and we're going to go to the center. I'm going to put my needle down, needle up. All right. Okay, a couple of securing stitches. Get my template out of the way. And then I'm going to move her into place. So I'm going to, there's a, a line right there in the middle of that template. And I'm going to scoot it over so that it lines right up with, with my blue registration line. If you have speed control on your machine, this is a good, good time to engage it and okay now we can go on around and I'm gonna cut those threads off so they don't take away the prettiness of our design okay so because of my fabric remember on a domestic machine we're also managing the bulk of our fabric I'm gonna go here so this is actually my next registration line so, I've got both hands on the ruler and fingers are on the ruler. The 
bands are on the fabric a little bit and back around and then scoot it over to my next one. And just lining that up. You could do half and set it, you know, like on the seam line of a border, just have half. That would be kind of neat. Oftentimes we're doing circles or scallops, and this could qualify for them. Okay, so I got to get this where I can see it, and part of the, and then there's my midline. Let me put it there. On curves, it's easy to get off. You just want to keep that foot right up against the ruler. Just firm, but not super hard. And there. Coming around, I'm hugging the inside of that curve. And coming back down. You will get a little bit of buildup of thread in the center. Which, if you can imagine in a metallic thread, would be really special. This is a 50 weight thread that we're using today. Okay, if you're pin, if you're pin basting, you want to take your pin away when it's interfering because that will cause your ruler to slip it won't uh, your ruler won't be on the fabric nice and flat okay just a couple more and hug that inside and come back down Almost like when you're driving and you head into a curve and it says speed limit and it slows you down. Just hugging the inside of that curve and coming back down. The nice thing too about this design is you get that wonderful secondary design on the inside, which it's almost like two for the price of one. So we get this nice secondary design too. That's a fun design, but you could do half along a border. Um, you could even fill up a triangle if you wanted to with three. So possibilities are endless when it comes to that. This little guy is trickier than he looks. And I'm always curious what you guys are gonna be doing. So you can see my um, painter's tape and I'm using that as a registration line. I'm gonna put this over here on the brown just a second. So the downside to me about a ruler, it, we're so used to having the horizontals, so many horizontals and um, verticals. This has the verticals at regular quarter inch intervals. I would have preferred a few more horizontals. So I'm going to use my painter's tape um, to help me find that horizontal all the way across. Obviously because our template is shaped uh, in an oval and a point, you're, once you hit that mid mid section of the curve, then it starts to taper in. So if you use that, if you come below, then you get that little loop when you go back back up for the next one. That's probably not making much sense. But my tape is helping me see where that midpoint is. And then I'm going to slide it over. So because I'm at the midpoint of that arc, 
this is really a back track. I don't get that. If you want a little loop, that's attractive too. But um, if you get that loop, it's because you're coming below the midpoint. Okay, and move it over. I can see this being a, a nice fill if you're doing a background fill. Kind of reminds me of church windows for some reason. Okay. Now, to get that echo down, if this were a seam line, I would travel down. If it weren't, if it was freestanding, I would stop and start. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my midline true. Let's see if we can get this around this way. So keep turning your fabric till you can find the best way to get there. So you can work unencumbered. All right. So you can see my red line. That's kind of, I'm putting that at the base. And it's kind of distorted from where I'm, the way I'm looking. So my needle is going to be at the edge of that tape. Because that tells me that I'm at the midpoint of my arc. So I'm going to travel back up and down. And then I'm going to slide over. Okay, I'm going to show you some. So you see uh, may not be important, but I like that to be there. But I want this to be straight. So what I'm going to do is when I come up, and as I come around, I'm going to just shift it over there just a little bit. straight and true. And see the next one is on, so that's good. different design um, and as they show on the back of our design sheet you can keep repeating that and get um, I don't know what kind of is kind of like a chevron or a, um, uh, not a tweed but I can see if you were using a lighter weight thread a 60 weight or an 80 weight thread and use that as a background you'd get some really interesting texture so, good one to play with. Um, this was turning our, we looked at this one a little bit, turning the template up and then down. So the next one would be down. So I'm going to get my needle in position, pull the thread up. Template out of the way, tacking stitch. Okay, and then I'm gonna move over. And so what I'm looking at is this quarter inch um, back here. So I'm gonna, when I travel up, I'm gonna just kiss, just touch the side of that previous leaf or teardrop you know 
or it could be a raindrop. So I want this about a quarter of an inch away, quarter inch there. And there it is. And hugging that inside. So just alternating, and you can do that with either shape, with the rounded shape or with the uh, leaf that's got the point on it. All right, get some threads out of the way. And take a look at something else here. So let's say, um, this is my, the center of my design. I'm gonna make a little dot there. I'm using pencil, which I wouldn't ordinarily use but for our sake. And I'll raise my foot up and then put the template down. I'm gonna put my needle right in the center. Now I'm going to line up the midline on each one. And we're just going to make four passes. Three o'clock and then we'll go, let's go this way so we can see what we're doing. design. My ruler moved and that's what happened. And so when you're, um, yeah, this one moved. This is shape should come out just a hair more. See how this arc is coming through. Um, you could, if it bothered you, you could go in and just make another little line or you could take it out or you could just say on a galloping horse. It was a lot of fun to make. So, <laughs> you know, each flower we see is not the same. It, they're all a little different. Okay, so those are some ideas. There are some more ideas we're gonna try and we're gonna move over to the long arm and see how we stitch those out. But again, if you're on the domestic machine, come and watch the stitch paths are the same. And um, 
you might even have some ideas that you're wondering why we're not trying. So we'd love to hear from you. So let's go over to the long arm. All right, we're gonna try some more designs that we looked at earlier. I'm going to take a couple of small stitches right here. And those of you that have long arm, you know if you, this is our needle up and needle down, but if you just hold it, it will do a couple of small stitches right there. So with our needle up, we're gonna put our template on. And needle down. Okay. So this is this is gonna be my horizontal line and then I'm gonna go oops, excuse me. Okay, I'm gotta stop because my finger's in the way. Hug that curve, come back down. I'm going to travel over. So I'm using, as you can see, the template to kind of guide me along that line till I get. So I'm looking here and I'm about one quarter inch away. If I want them touching, if I don't, then it's no big deal. But I'm gonna have those just barely touching. You wanna make sure that all corners of your template are down. That's why I just moved that. Okay, we're gonna slide along here. I'm gonna check and see. So now I'm about a quarter inch away. Now I'm gonna reverse it and come back. Down, hug the curve. And then I'm gonna slide back around. Kiss that edge. the curve. Another reason to slow down around the curves, whether they're inner or outer curves, is if we don't, then we, um, the stitch isn't nice and even, and it'll pull the bobbin thread up, and you get um, what we call eyelashes. Okay, so I want to bring my needle up so I can get my template out of the way so you can see that. So earlier um, when we were looking at drawings, I didn't have this stitch in the middle. And it occurred to me just as we were stitching it out that um, if you remember, this was just an open, nice open space. So the way to get around that would be to stitch out each individual up and down and um, then move, do a stop start, and, and do the motif again if you didn't want the line in between. Um, trying to think if there's any other way to travel without stopping and starting, and I'm gonna keep thinking on that. But still, you've got this really neat design. You could even then um, just come over and under. You could make that part of I've got the machine in cruise, but it's slow, so it's harder to, it's actually harder to steer accurately when you're going this slowly. 
needs to be a little faster. But you could use your travel line then as part of your motif, make it part of the motif. Um, and that's kind of a fun design. Uh, you could go back in and do some fill work on the upper and lower parts too. Put a little twirl in there or um, a teardrop or a little bubble of some sort. It would be fun. Okay. So let's try this whole idea of moving around our quilt like we're doing an edge to edge. So I'm going to put a flower there, let's say, and let's say I've got another sticker over here. So we're going to do, and I would draw my grid, um, eight point grid, but if you're feeling really dangerous, you can just eyeball it because I've got my horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to stop, my hands are in the way. Back down. Okay, and that looks about midway because I can see this corner up there. And down, and then there's my. So you can see, I didn't stay close to the edge there. It's easy to do. Take your time coming around and move, move your hand. My hand just moved. And around. We're gonna do one more and then we're gonna actually I think I'm gonna go this direction so my stem is coming out the way I want it to all right now remember we gotta raise our needle to move our template and our machine wants to move a little bit So once you get your flower, then you're going to decide where you want your leaves to be. And remember, down here's my next spot. So I'm going to raise my needle up, and I think I'm going to put a leaf here. And so I've got my needle down. Up and come down. You can even go up. Put a little fill in there. And then I'm going to drop down. Put another leaf. I got really free motion on that one because my template moved. And down here we go. And then make your next flower. And then you start working your way around the grid again.
around to the point. And you could put as many petals in as you wanted, um, obviously. But that would be a, a fun and creative way to fill up your quilt. Um, a baby quilt or maybe just a summertime picnic quilt. We are going to be doing that one of these days soon. Um, or maybe um, a little girl's quilt. So a nice way, and you, you can make your stem as short or as long as you want, as curved as you want. Um, you could even, if you wanted to take up some more space, throw in some, some loops, even some little buds if you wanted to. Um, just make it up as you go type thing. But a fun template, you'd never suspect all of that from this little guy. So a lot we can do with him. Um, next time around, we're gonna actually come up, this is number six in our series and it's the twirly. Um, so again, straightforward, we'll get really good at making those inner and outer curves and then learning to echo them and give you almost a, a feathery type um, of pattern. So this will be a, a lot of fun. So hope you can join me next time. Um, until then, stay safe and healthy. Mm -hmm.